Good morning. Beat me to it. Acts chapter 22. Hmm. I don't usually do this, uh, but this is a kind of interesting uh, uh, lesson this week. Um, this, uh, it's not just interesting, but it more emphasizes uh, the testimony uh, that, that Paul gave to those people that, um, that he loved. That was something they pointed out is, you know, we get in our, our walk with the Lord and we're worried, and we should, right? Most of all, be concerned huh, that we're on the right track, right? Obviously, we open our mouths and we feed false information, right? Shame on us, right? But I think the dedication uh, that men like Paul, uh, I'm using his as an example, right, had uh, towards giving his life, pretty much, right, for the salvation of others. Not in the same sense of Christ. He didn't save these people, right? But to get the word to these people, right, there was never an end to where he would go, right? Not an end to what, no, no end to the number of stonings or beatings or scourgings, etc. right, that he would encounter. And that's, you know, when, when you read, when you read the Acts, you, know, you have a tendency to say, when you get to the end, you start thinking about, oh, Paul, he, he's quite an amazing individual. Was he not? Um, and he's not the only one, right? He's just the one whose uh, uh, authorship we have pretty much captured in the New Testament, right? The majority of the New Testament. So anyway, there's a section in the uh, beginning of the lesson, and they suggested I read it to you. So, before we read scriptures, this little section is going to bring you up to speed with what we've been talking about, right? And Paul, what he's been doing up to this point, just in the last week or two, not last week or two, been the last lesson or two, okay? So, provided I can read this, and you can understand this, I'm going to bring you up to speed, it's supposed to make you think, okay? Now, think in here. Hear it, think it, feel it, ask questions. And then we'll begin reading scriptures, okay? So, hang on. This is really good. It's not that long. Paul, okay, Paul returned to Jerusalem. Now, I'm going to say this. Last week, Paul returned to Jerusalem. He's on the end of his third mission. They said, don't do it, Paul. Don't do it. He said, I have to do it. For multiple reasons, right? He, you know, he was going back for Pentecost. He had a an offering to return to the church, to the church of Jerusalem, etc. So that's where we were last week. And then all, what would you say? All chaos broke loose, right? Just like he expected. Right. So that was sort of the end of last week. Remember, they had caught, the Jews had come in from Asia into the church and said, that's that guy, right? That Paul guy caused all that trouble back in Asia. Well, then they grabbed him, and next thing you know, they're going to beat him and whip him and kill him, and the Roman soldiers stepped in out of nowhere and saved his hide, at least temporarily, okay? All right. So Paul returned to Jerusalem, having been saved for 22 years. You ever think about that? He'd been saved for 22 years. So since the time he was on the road to Damascus, Great light shone, blinded him temporarily. It's been 22 years. He's been doing, on his mission, he's been doing missions now for, well, at least that long, okay? I just had to put a, a time factor in there because we just sort of think it's just like overnight, right? Because we read a chapter to chapter, you never think, well, he's, you know, it's all this happened in one year. Having been saved for 22 years, since his conversion, he had become the number one proponent of Christianity. Three ever-widening circuits of missionary journeys resulted in numerous churches planted 
throughout much of the vast Roman Empire. Remember the maps we had? All across the Roman Empire. Thousands of Gentiles had been converted, as well as many Jews. Remember the first place Paul went, everywhere he went, was straight to the synagogue, day one. Now he was in Jerusalem, the Jews' territory. Remember he was back home, at least where he began, when he was a rabbi, right? He was a Pharisee. When he was well-educated, he was Roman. He was Jewish, right, above all. Trying, I'm, I'm reading this, but I can't hardly put it all in, in uh, just based on what they're in, but these are good points. Trying to become all things to all men, he had endeavored to pacify the Jews by taking a temporary Nazarite vow. Remember last week? He went, when he got to Jerusalem, the guys at the church, James, Peter, John, etc., okay, said, all these Jews, they love Jesus. They believe. But they're still, they're still Jews. Still have traditions. They still do things the way Jews do it. And they don't think that you are uh, doing a very good job of uh, pacifying the Jews, right, out there. You're, you're telling them to, yeah, throw all that stuff down in the sewer and just believe in Jesus. Well, honestly, that's the truth. <laughs> that's the truth. But they didn't like it, right? Or they needed a little bit of sympathy, right? But one of the things that Paul did was he was, when he was with the Jews, he was a Jew. When he was with the Gentiles, he was a Jew. meaning he was, yeah, he, was. he was what he was. Because what? So that they would accept him, accept the word that he preached. Not the lifestyle he lived, but he wouldn't let that distract them from hearing or receiving the word of Jesus Christ. You know how important that is even to us today? Now, I don't, I don't, I can't begin to imagine what these guys were going through at that point in time because it's much bigger. But even once your family, once the people you work with, once the people at the convenience store, Kill them with kindness? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So he took his Nazarite vow, and he said, okay, I'll, 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 I'll get in there, and, I, and you know what I'll do? I'll even pay their sacrifice. And when the Jews see that, they'll say, hey, this Paul guy, he's not all that bad. You know, he's one of us. Yeah. Right? So Paul said, no big deal. He said, I, listen, I know, your I know your traditions better than you know them. I know more tongues than you know. Speak of that. He could do it all. God blessed him. God called him to do it all. Amen. Right? We talk about the calling. We'll hear more about that. Okay. I gotta keep reading. I gotta read this because this is this is warming you up to our uh, lesson this week. Okay, that plan failed, right? Remember they came in, they messed it all up, right? In the amongst that. While in, temp while in the temple, some of the Jews from Asia Minor, where Paul had preached, recognized him, like we just talked about. They hurled false accusations at him. Remember, they said, hey, they, they're letting the Jews go too far. Excuse me. They're letting the Gentiles go too far in the temple. Remember, they had this yeah. tradition. I don't know all the, the main halls and courts, etc. But they had them. And then Gentiles couldn't go past the outer court or what it was. They, they, these, are, these are rumors, making them up just to stimulate frustration, anger, right? You used to add a little bit, just throw a little bit in there. It's like your kids, you know what I mean? Or like, or like you and me, <laughs> depending on the situation, right? Stir it up. Here we go. They heard a false accusation. This was all it took. Tension was high. This spark set off the tinder box. All right. Yeah. Silly word. What? Anybody? Oh, we built a fire over here last night. You know what, you know what tinder is? Yeah. And my dad, we, when I was a kid, we had a fire, big old fireplace. And over here he had a little box of 
He called kindling. Kindling. That's what he, he could <laughs> tune it all up and build his wood, stick the kindling in underneath, and maybe a piece of newspaper, I don't remember. And then, but that kindling was, it's all it took to get things hot. They mobbed him. Thinking of last week, okay? They mobbed him. The Roman guards who had granted him permission to speak rescued him. the question here. How would you respond to this situation? You have five minutes to speak if you were Paul. Okay? Warming up this week's lesson. Bingo. You have five minutes to speak. A mob stands before you that hates you and your Savior. They've just tried to kill you and would have done so if the soldiers had not intervened. Although they despise you, here he is, you love them. You love them. These are the folks that, remember Christ? On the cross? Crucify. Forgive them, Lord. They know not what they do. Although they despise you, you love them and want to see them saved. Badly enough to lose your soul if it would mean saving theirs. Now, I'm not saying he would really jump into hell, right? Meaning he would, he would give everything he had, right? And his life. You know, they call those, obviously the word is martyrs, right? Those that... I mean, for, obviously for multiple reasons, but for Christ, giving your life for him. I'm hurrying. You, meaning Paul, you've waited years for this opportunity. You know how they think. This is Paul. He's smart. You were one of them at one time. How often have you pictured the scene and dreamed of the day you could speak to them of Jesus. He's been out there in Rome, in Asia, not Rome yet. Hasn't been to Rome yet. But now he's home. He wants to speak to them. The Jews, specifically. Why is that? Think about this. That's what we're stirring up here. Think of Paul. You were one of them at one time. How often you've pictured. Okay, I said that. Now they are all around you. Imagine yourself in Paul's shoes. Filling every available space. You raise your hands. The shouting mob suddenly gets silent. Strangely silent. Now what do you say? Remember last week he was talking to the, the soldiers and they said, do you speak Aramaic or Hebrew. Greek? Hebrew? Well, not last week he was taught the soldiers. They don't know Hebrew. No, they don't. But the Jews know Hebrew. So Paul begins speaking. He's testifying to them. What? In Hebrew. Okay. Or tongues comes back to me for some reason. Yeah? I can. Okay, I gotta go on. Last paragraph. One of the simplest yet most effective ways of giving witness for Christ is by giving one's testimony. To try to explain salvation theologically, let me help you with that. Theologically to a person is difficult. Okay? So I'm meeting a guy at the gas station. He's been working all day, welding on the pipeline. It's hot. 90 degrees. He wants to get home, get an air conditioner. And you say, 
You know Jesus? And you begin speaking to this person theologically. What do we mean? There's a whole lot that you and I, bro, Butch, Martin Jefferson, said we could do, scripturally speaking, right. to overwhelm someone with theology. Comparisons, validations, clarifications, dates, times. We do that here in Sunday school, don't we? We, we have fun with that. To try to explain salvation theologically to a person is difficult. This guy just wants to get home, get an air conditioner, cool off. Not being spiritually minded, he rejects theological arguments. It's good for you. What's good for you is good. You have it your way, I'll have it my way. Right? On the other hand, I'm just about done here. On the other hand, experience is something he can understand. What did Jesus do for you? Well, you weren't there. You, you, you didn't experience or, or witness or have the same um, uh, at that time. Experience, right? On the other hand, experience is something he can understand. Paul chose... On this occasion, this is today's lesson. Paul chose on this occasion, as well as on others, all right? I'm almost done here. It's good. I don't usually read some of this stuff. Is, you know, it's just lesson stuff. Paul chose on this occasion, as well as on others, simply to recount his conversion as a means of giving a witness for Christ and to defend himself against the rioters in Jerusalem. Paul is going to, in today's lesson, they're going to allow Paul to speak yeah. to the Jews. Who is? Romans. The Romans. They're like, get this guy out of here. <laughs> Just for the sake of chaos, right? Yeah. I mean, give me, Paul says, give me just a minute. Give me a couple minutes to speak. And he is, okay? So let's go in verse, chapter 22, verse 1. Uh, sorry for all that. So here's Paul speaking. He says, men, brethren, and fathers. He's speaking to his own people. Loves them, remember? Hear ye my defense, which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence. And he saith. I am barely a man, which I am a Jew. Okay, we're talking now experience, not theology. I'm a man, which I am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Sicilia. Hey, uh, Sam, throw me a map up there with, with one of those cities in there, just to show you where Paul's from. Dang, guys, get it. Here's Jerusalem, right here. See Tarsus up there, straight up? That's from where Paul's from. Born, born there. Paul was sent to Jerusalem to become a student, a pupil. He was one of those golden boys, right? Probably got made fun of in class, right? Because he got A's on his grade card. Anyway, they sent him to Jerusalem to be educated theologically by the greatest of all grandsons. Okay. Born in Tarsus, a city in Sicilia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel. Brought up in Jerusalem under the teachings of Gamaliel. Gamaliel was a grandson of one of the great, great Jewish yeah, man of old time. If you want to know more about that, I can help you. And taught, this is Paul, he's talking to the Jews, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day. He was my God then. Still my God, right? But 
Notice the words here. They pointed out, and I, you may overread this, the law of the fathers. As opposed to the law of God. Tradition. Law of God. Law of the fathers. If you have a different interpretation of that, let me know. Help me. I, I see why he did it. In this particular sentence, it was he went to, or like the Mosaical law, some other authority, they would lost them or they wouldn't stay there looking for them. He knew more about it than they did. Yeah. Right? They couldn't ask a question, right, yeah. that he didn't have the answer to. Right. And they just, hmm. And then they walk away bored. This is Paul. And I persecuted this way unto the death. Meaning what? This is Paul. I, when I was in those shoes, I persecuted right. unto the death. Right. Meaning what? People's lives. Yeah. Christians' yeah. lives. Yeah. Put them in jail. Went to get them. Put them in jail. They starved to death. Who cares? He won't, he's not worried about it. Stood by Stephen's stoning. Yeah. Let me continue. Far I waste too much time. Here. And all the estate of the elders. Let me read it. As, uh, I'm sorry. Verse 4. And I persecuted this way unto the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women. And also the high priest doth bear me witness. The high priest. Remember... Remember when Paul, I don't know if you remember, Paul was on his way to Damascus, his last journey to bring home those Christians, to bind them up and drag them back to prison. Who sent or who gave or who authorized this? The Jewish high priest. Paul's saying, if he was here today, standing here today, he tell you, he sent me. I went. I went, and he authorized it. Right? Also, the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, me, every, all the other uh, old guys in, in churches, the Jewish church, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. Now, that's just, he's telling them, here's how things began for me and how they changed. Where I was on my way to Damascus to get those naughty Christians. Verse 6, and it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus. Is Damascus on this map? It's somewhere over here, right? I don't know, Sam, you can find this one picture in relationship to Jerusalem to Damascus, right? Because he was in Jerusalem. Anyway, just to give you an idea. I'm just going to give you an idea that's over here. Okay. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh to Damascus about noon, right? Suddenly there shone from heaven a great light around me. So Paul and his partners, buddies in crime, heading Damascus, and poof, a great light show around noon. And I fell into the ground, heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul. Is your, are your, is your all uh, in red? This is Christ. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, this is Paul, I answered, who art thou, Lord? Question mark. Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. Now, why does he throw of Nazareth in there? I mean, this is just something they point out, unless I kind of thought it was uh, stimulating, right? This is Jesus. This is the Jesus. 
This is the Savior. What good comes from Nazareth? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth. Talking to him in red. Verse 9. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him and spake, voice of him that spake to me. So all the other guys with him, they're head, heading up there. And so pff, great light. I can only imagine I'm trying to see, you know, visualize. Knocks, knocks them pretty much off their feet, right? The Lord speaks to Paul. The other guys hear this. Excuse me. Saul. The light. But they did not hear the voice. But Paul did. Have you heard this scripture a million times, Butch? Does it ever get old? Sorry if. Uh, verse 10. And I said, This is Paul. He said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, what was it? What, what did it feel like, uh, Butch, when the Lord called you? Well, it was a sudden thing. It was also, didn't know what I was going to do about it. <laughs> Why a dumb farm boy would be called to preach the gospel. And I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, he said, arise. He said, go into, Ma go into Damascus. Mine's in red here, right? This is Christ. Go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. Don't ask me any questions. Just do it. And Oh, he's, oh by the way, he's, he's blind at the moment. He's blind. The bright light. Now, the other guys aren't blind. No. Paul is. And Jesus is talking to him, right? Yeah. And Paul is telling this to the Jews. The ones he loves. The ones to see, give their lives to Jesus Christ. Verse 11. I had so much I wanted to say, but this is too good. When, and when I could not see for the glory of the light, meaning I could not see for the, the greatness of that light, right? The glory, right? Being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into Damascus. So what? He can't see, so hold on to the side of the saddle, yeah? Or strap him onto a donkey or a camel. I don't know how he got there. It doesn't say. Verse 12. So he's in Damascus. Blind as a bat. And one, Ananias. This is an individual. Who had been given instruction by the Lord. And one, Ananias, a devout man according to the law. Another Jewish guy. Devout. Having a good report of all the Jews. Which dwelt there. Came, he came unto me. Okay, I didn't mean to change that. Verse 13. Came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul. What, what does it mean when somebody calls you brother? Or sister? Not. Huh? Tree of Paul. Tree of Paul's life. I'm not sure what they mean by that. Well, the leaves are changing. Oh, 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 oh. Well, that's good. Brother Saul, meaning what? Let's continue. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Brother Saul, receive thy sight. What did he say? Don't be blind anymore.
Receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. And he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee that thou shouldest know his will and see that just one. My just one is capital J, capital O. You all say that? That just one. There's only one just one. One perfect one. See that just one and should us hear the voice of his mouth. See him and hear him. Okay? Sorry if I'm slowing things down. Verse 15. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. What you're told, what you hear, you'll repeat. You'll be his witness. Right? Okay. I'm sorry if I... Okay. Any questions? Verse 16. And now, and now, why tarry is that? It's a question mark. Arise, be ba- and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So what's he saying to do? Now you start acting like these Christians. What is it when we get, we get, I mean, a lot. Obedience. Get saved. Get baptized. Let the world see your works. Wash away. What, what is, what is baptism symbol of? Right? Spiritual cleansing. Spiritual cleansing. Meaning what? Baptism doesn't wash away the sins. Only one washes away the sins. Christ, blood, sacrifice, washes the sin. What's baptism do? It demonstrates, right? I'm going down, be buried, will be raised, new. Act like a Christian. All right, you take a vow over a Nazarite, take a Nazarite vow. It's okay. When you get saved, you get baptized, right? You should, right? Should be it. Should be your. It should be your next greatest priority, right? Say it again. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Don't just. Absolutely. Yeah. How many times? I, I think in this, and, and then you know. God forgive me. I, I think of this, you know, people give their heart to the Lord, right? They'll come and I, mean, I don't know. You know, they may they may they may visit. They may get saved. They may be in a car. They may be on a football field, right? Give their heart to the Lord, right? I always thought I always thought it was part of the first work. Yeah. When the scripture tells you you go back to the first work, that means what you're saying to them. Go back, pick up where you laid it down. How, how many of us are were guilty or are guilty <clears throat> of not being obedient? Right. Right. Yeah. I'm saved. Where's the water? <laughs> Where were we talking yesterday about the Glen Cattell? Remember the old days? Um, I'm not as old as you guys, but I remember. Them going out there, uh, I've seen him break the ice in January yes, to, to baptize them and only do, and do it on the day they were saved. Right. That's not a joke, no. is it? You can do the act on six. In January. In now, w- <laughs> now, where I lived, it wasn't as cold as it is up here. I don't know how many guys had to break the ice up here in January just to get somebody in the water. I don't think we were the only ones that were doing it, but I think we were probably the one that done it the Get baptized, man. That's what he said. That's what Paul, they told Paul. And guess what? He did. Okay, let me continue. I don't want to. I got all... Oh, we got a few minutes here. 
Verse 17, and it came to pass that when I was coming into Jerusalem, this is Paul, even while I prayed in the temple, I, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 okay. Now, officially, that was the end of today's lesson as far as verses are concerned, okay? But we talked a little bit last week, right? And this is Paul. Don't forget who he's talking to. So just say, like me and Anza watch Little House on the Prairie. Not Bonanza. Trish watches that. But every now and then I get those continued next week. You think? <clears throat> Appreciate that love. <laughs> anyway, you want to see a good show? Watch the last episode of Little House on the Prairie, season eight. Write that down. I know you can do it. You would not believe. I mean it. And I say that spiritually speaking. I don't know how the guy that writes this show, I don't know how he does it. Because you remember that many years ago, it wasn't that many years ago. I mean, Angela's getting up there. How old were you when we watched that? Junior high? Younger? Okay, anyway. Jesus. God. They were in the text. Right? Miracles. I could spend a whole lesson talking about just that one episode. Last episode, season eight. You got to watch it. Make a point. Part two. Yeah, continue. <laughs> Damascus. I got two comments here to make. I got to make. This is verse 17. And it came to pass that when I was come to Jer again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. Now, this is Paul. He's still talking to the Jews. And this is script text that was not in this week's lesson, but it won't be in next week's because they'll move on to the next lesson. Okay. And saw him saying unto me, him being who? Christ. Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. Christ said, go on, get out of Jerusalem, take my testimony elsewhere. And I said, Lord, they know that I am prison and beat in every synagogue them that believed on thee. He's talking to Christ. <laughs> This is Paul, and he's talking to the Lord. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. This is Paul. He's talking to the Lord. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. Well, he was, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I haven't been called to preach, but I've heard men that have been uh, weren't necessarily immediately obedient. You've heard that, Butch, right? It's like, but remember Moses? See, I came, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're right. And he is telling these this information to the Jews, discussing his conversation with Christ. There you go. I'm hurrying. So if I read fast. And they gave him audience unto his word. They, meaning who? The Jews. They gave him audience. And then lifted up their voices and said, Away with this such, excuse me, away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. So all of a sudden, 
Paul's testimony came to an end. Yeah. Agreed. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust in the air, the chief captain, okay, these are this is the Roman chief captain. The chief captain commanded him to be caught, excuse me, to be brought into the castle and bade that he should be examined by scourging. Examined by scourging, meaning what? Whip him, right? Beat him until we figure out who this guy is. We'll knock, the, knock some sense in or out of this guy. That he might know wherefore they cried so against him. Here we go, Butch. We talked about this last week. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman? And uncondemned? That was against the law, in Roman law. When the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, Take heed what thou doest. For this man's a Roman. Then the chief captain came and said to him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. Paul said, Yep. You got him. Uh, 20, 28, sorry about that. So do this, like, Jeff. My brother Jeff. And the chief captain answered, with a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, but I was free born. Then straightway they departed from him, which should have examined him, and the chief captain also was afraid after he knew that he was a Roman because he had bound him. <laughs> well, they snatched old Paul off, put him in binds, chains, began to scourge him, and he said, I'm a Roman. You can't do this without what? Authority. So that stopped things quickly there. That was, that was some extra stuff, right, we just talked about briefly last week. I want to share. But anyway, lesson continues next week in chapter 23. If you want to read ahead, uh, that's all I have time to share today. Sorry about that. But that's, uh, you know, a couple, couple things I'm looking at the clock uh, brought to my attention. Now, anybody in here used to be Catholic? All right, God forgive me. No. There, there, I was reading this, and, and actually it's kind of good. In the lesson, this isn't my infantry. There was a, an individual in the lesson. His name was Polycarp. Saint Polycarp. He was a real man. He had a real purpose. He was a disciple of St. John. St. John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Polycarp. Now, Polycarp was younger, right? Anyway, they talked to him just a little bit in this lesson about being a martyr. He's an example of another individual who gave his life for the sake of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Doesn't mean he was, and he, and he was somewhat of an author, but his, his authorship didn't make it into our New Testament. Right? But in some churches, he's continued to be elevated, you know, up there with Mary and whoever else, right? But he, his purpose was real, right? And he got in trouble, right? The Romans snatched him up, took him to the Colosseum and said, we're going to teach you, right? And they began burning him at the stake. So they tied him to a pole, lit the wood. Wood wouldn't burn, so they just stabbed him <laughs> and killed him anyway. Back then, they used to have this Colosseum. They'd throw you out there. And they turn the lions loose, or they let turn the gladiators loose and let them chop on you, or they burn you. Well, Polycarp was one of those. I was teasing Mike last week if he'd ever heard of him. I hadn't heard of him. Uh, but again, in the Catholic Church, you would hear him uh, look at the clock. His name may be discussed 
or he talked to someone, your mom, I don't know if you know someone. Well, I hadn't either until this lesson. But anyway, don't worry about Polycarp. Don't, don't look for him in the Bible. He's not there. He's just another example, right? But the funny thing was, his last words as they came to him said, he said, 80 and 6 years have I served him. And he never did me wrong. And how can I now blaspheme my king that has saved me? Pour some gasoline on there, right? <laughs> I give my life to him. I give my life for him. Okay, that's all i got time for. So anyway, thanks. We'll continue next week. Um, you just stand, we'll say prayer and move on. Most well, gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful, Lord, for this time, uh, just to to meditate, to, to share, spend, uh, teaching, learning, uh, understanding your word. We love you. Thank you. Be as a service, God, and all is said and done, God. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. <laughs>